As an artist, I've always been interested in objects and the ongoing life of objects and the objects that civilizations leave behind. So part of American Dreamscape is looking at the objects and things, and in this case, the houses, um, that were built in the mid-20th century and how they reflect our values as a culture and this um, dream, this ideal that is um, difficult to pinpoint and yet everyone has an idea about it, the American dream. And I've chosen an object that I think for me um, is a kind of magical object and an historic object at the same time, and that's a dollhouse. I've been most interested in popular culture in a way, so I've used magazines uh, from the time. How did people think about uh, the post-World War II uh, prosperity and what was possible at the time, and how was all of this manifested in the new homes, in the new domesticity, what people could have as an indication of progress. I knew that I wanted to create an experience for the viewer to walk in that would be larger than life size and would give this sense of being in an overwhelming domestic space. The kitchen in American Dreamscape is actually modeled after a number of basic designs of kitchens of the time that I found in advertising and also kitchens that I experienced as a child. The kitchen was this epicenter of modernity. It had all of the conveniences, the new dishwasher, the ovens, the countertop that was streamlined like a rocket. Refrigerators were being designed so that they were all, they almost looked aerodynamic in a way. Almost all of the work in the gallery is trompe l'oeil, which means that it is done in a way so that it fools your eye. It's actually flat, but it looks like it has some dimension to it. Some of the objects appear as if they might be something that you could reach out and touch. The banqueting table also incorporates trompe l'oeil effects. Some of the elements on the table are three-dimensional and real, and other aspects of the table are completely illusionary, so that all of the silverware and napkins and some of the place settings actually are photographic. In the artist book series, Asphalt, they're meant to create almost an imaginary highway like an American highway, uh, sort of endless and filled with experiences along the road. In several of the books, there appears a little landscape running along the highway that is constructed from words that we recognize from advertising representing various products like Windex, Tupperware, Lysol, fiberglass, and then some that we don't recognize when I look at a dollhouse, or a model of a house, or even some of the advertising of the time, I feel like I'm looking at materials that for our own culture are the way that we look at Pompeii. A civilization gone? What remains? The illusions of that lifestyle. Things that people put in their homes that were valued, the things that survive.